Hi everyone, welcome to Cons Endo Bites, a channel to discover and learn. This is Dr. Vijeta, and in this video, I will explain about laser Doppler flowmetry and pulse oximetry in endodontic diagnosis. The contents of this video include the terminology of pulp sensibility and pulp vitality and the mechanism indications and limitations of laser Doppler flowmetry and pulse oximetry. Let us understand the terms sensibility, sensitivity and vitality. The ability of a tissue to respond to a stimulus is referred to as sensibility. This is because of the presence of nerve fibers within that tissue. So the tooth can respond to heat, cold and sap because of the presence of A delta nerve fibers and C fibers within the pulpal tissue. An exaggerated response to a stimulus is referred to as sensitivity and the presence of a blood supply within the tissue refers to vitality. To assess the status of the pulp, we use different types of tests. These ca can be categorized as sensibility tests and vitality tests. The tests which, te uh, which assess the status of the nerve fibers within the pulp and indirectly give an indication of the condition of the pulp ref are sensibility tests. These include thermal tests, the electric pulp test, test cavity and the anesthetic test. The vitality tests are those which either measure the pulpal blood flow or the oxygen saturation levels and the two most famous tests in these are the laser Doppler flowmetry and the pulse oximetry. So several experimental methods have been used to evaluate the pulp circulation. The radioisotope clearance and hydrogen gas saturation are invasive techniques and hence cannot be used. The laser Doppler flowmetry, pulse oximetry, dual wavelength spectrophotometry, photoplethysmography and measurement of surface temperature are non-invasive methods to measure the pulp vitality. Coming to laser Doppler flow metry. The laser Doppler flow metry is a method used to assess the blood flow in the microvascular system of the pulp. It is non-invasive and objective. The objectivity is uh, one of the advantages over the sensibility test because it does not rely on the patient's response. It is also painless and a semi-quantitative method. The Doppler effect is the basis of the laser Doppler flow metry. This effect was first described in the year 1842 by Austrian physicist Christian Doppler in a paper entitled On the Colored Light of Double Stars and Some Other Heavenly Bodies. This technique uses a light beam from a helium neon laser with a wavelength of 632.8 nanometers. Other wavelengths used are semiconductor lasers with a wavelength of either 780 nanometers or 820 nanometers. Coming to the mechanism of the laser Doppler flow meter. The laser Doppler flow meter consists of a probe which is placed on the surface of the tooth. So in this probe, there is a source as well as the detector photocells. From the source, a laser light of known frequency is emitted. This laser beam is split into two and directed onto the tooth surface. So the laser beam light passes through the enamel and dentin and reaches the blood vessels within the pulp. The laser light can either interact with the moving red blood cells or can interact with the static tissue. The part of the light which interacts with the moving red blood cells is shifted in fre frequency, whereas the part which does not interact with the cells is reflected back directly without any shifting. The detector uh, takes up both the shifted and the unshifted light and analyzes it and converts it into a semi-quantitative measurement of blood flow termed the flux signal.
The flux is a measure of the number of red blood cells and their velocity. Most current laser Doppler flow meters also give a readout apart from the flux in perfusion units. These perfusion units are arbitrary and calculated by the software of a particular device. Hence, different devices give out different perfusion units and they cannot be compared. This slide shows a basic laser Doppler flow metry unit. This is the display which shows the flux signal and these are the probe tips which can be placed on the tooth surface. So to analyze the uh, readout of the instrument, we can use the FFT or the fast Fourier transform analysis. This is a typical readout of the laser Doppler machine. So this is difficult to understand. There are several spikes and we do not know whether these are random spikes or they represent the heartbeats. So when this is subjected to the FFT analysis, we can assess the frequency of these spikes. And this analysis shows that the frequency is about 1.3 hertz per minute, which is equivalent to 70 8 beats per minute indicating blood circulation within the pulp and hence a vital pulp. In this graph we can see that there are no consistent spikes and therefore the pulp is deemed to be necrotic. Coming to the indications of laser Doppler flow metry. So it can be used to estimate the pulp vitality it is very useful for pulp testing in children because children fail to give a response to the sensibility test in accurate way. So it is also useful in case of periapical radiolucencies, that is to differentiate radiolucencies of endodontic and non-endodontic origin. The laser Doppler flow metry can be used to assess uh, age-related changes in the pulpal blood flow. Using this system, it has been shown that hemodynamics in the human pulp is reduced with age. It can also be used to monitor the reactions of local and systemic pharmacological agents and their effect on the pulpal blood flow. It has been shown that the nerve blocks can re uh, result in reduced blood flow to the pulp. It can also be used to assess the pulpal reactions to orthodontic procedures. And it has been shown that the intrusive forces significantly reduce the pulpal blood flow. It can be used to assess the vitality of the pulp after orthognathic surgery. It can also be used to measure the pulpal blood flow after traumatic injuries and monitor the revascularization of replanted teeth. Let us look into the limitations and considerations of laser Doppler flow metry. The laser Doppler flow metry gives a reliable reading only when the probe is placed in a stable position on the crown. For this, we need to fabricate a stabilizing stent. The stabilizing stent can be uh, fabricated using a putty rubber based impression material and it has to be fabricated for each patient. Into this uh, uh, stent, a hollow cylinder can be placed which acts as a guide to the probe so that the same area of the tooth can be measured each time in trauma follow-up. Also, we need to use a heavy rubber dam to reduce the secondary signals which are generated by the gingival microcirculation. The laser Doppler flow metry is sensitive to contamination from blood flow in the adjacent tissues and the cost of the equipment is very high. This is a major deterrent for use in clinical practice. The presence of mineralized tissues limit the penetration of the laser beam into the tooth. Also, there were some concerns initially that the laser light could be hazardous, but it has been proven that they do not cause any injury to the soft or the hard tissues. Coming to pulse oximetry. 
the oximeter applies a principle known as the pure lambert law which states that an unknown concentration of solute that is hemoglobin dissolved in a known solvent blood can be assessed by the light absorption of the solute this basically means that the light absorption of the solute can be used to assess its concentration a pulse oximeter works by transmitting two wavelengths of light the red light and the infrared light through a translucent portion of the patient's body which can be the finger ear lobe or the tooth this light demonstrates the mechanism of the pulse oximeter the pulse oximeter contains two leds which emit one emits the red light of a frequency of 660 nanometers and the other emits an infrared light of 940 nanometers. Both these lights pass through the tooth and are received by a sensor placed on the opposite side of the tooth. So the infrared and red lights are absorbed in different quantities by oxygenated and deoxygenated blood and this uh, information is which is received by the sensor is transmitted to a microprocessor and which converts the measurements into oxygen saturations of blood. The indications of pulse oximeter is wide range. It can be used in dentistry in general for monitoring of vital signs during dental care, during and after maxillofacial surgeries, and so on. It is also very useful during sedation techniques or treating medically compromised patients. It can be used to assess the pulp vitality in recently traumatized teeth in which there is temporary paresthesia of the nerves and hence the pulp sensibility tests are not useful in such cases. To detect the inflammation or partial necrosis in tooth that are still responding to the pulp sensibility test. It is particularly useful in children and in assessing the vitality of immature teeth. Let us look at the limitations and the influencing factors of pulp, uh, pulse oximeters. Patient variables such as low peripheral perfusion, increased venous pulsations, hemoglobin disorders, vasoconstriction, hypotension, and body movements will contribute to false or delayed readings. Environmental factors may also limit the accurate measurements. These include the presence of an electrocautery near the sensor, ambient light interferences, and blood pressure changes. So the pulse oximeter, another major limitation is that it cannot be used for pulp testing in extensively restored tooth like teeth with full coverage restorations. To get an accurate reading, the placement of the sensor on the tooth accurately is very important. The sensor should confirm to the size, shape and anatomy of the tooth and the LED and the photo detector should be parallel. In this uh, picture, we can see that an ear probe has been modified by Goho and he has used this uh, modified ear probe to evaluate the pulp oxygen saturation. So this two uh, um, uh, plates are placed parallel to each other and the light transmitted from the probe is received correctly by uh, the photo detector. And this is a custom-made probe by Dr. Gropi Krishna et al., which is used for testing the vitality of the tooth. To conclude, to assess the status of the pulp, we have different tests like the neural sensibility test and the pulp vitality test. The pulp vitality tests give information actually about the blood supply within the tooth. The two most common pulp vitality tests are the laser Doppler flowmetry and the pulse oximeter and their advantages include that being an objective test, they do not rely on the patient's response for giving the test result. They are particularly useful in immature teeth, in cases of trauma, children, and anxious patients. 
If you like this video, like, share and subscribe to Cons Endo Bites. Thank you.